Oh, nice. Well, he has quite the title. How did you guys get to him? Oh, just a cold email. And we were like super surprised when he emailed us back like the next day being like, yeah, I'm thrilled that you guys are interested. Would you guys like to Zoom meet? And we were absolutely over the moon. But, um... yeah. Hey guys, welcome to the Up Next podcast where we are interviewing teen entrepreneurs that are making it big time in the startup world. We are asking the questions we know you want to hear. Up Next is an app made for teens where anyone can join or build a real life startup. Okay, our guests today are Will McCormack and Evan Alfandre. We, you guys, we are really excited to have you. We heard about what you're doing and we thought it was genius. You guys are 18 years old from the US, founders of Invisiclip, which are clip-on sunglass attachments that can eliminate face recognition. You founded this company when you were 18 years old. Um, guys, what am I missing? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, not really. I mean, when we, last year we sort of, we wanted to create a company that was all about sort of social change and um, protecting, you know, civil liberties and personal privacy. And, you know, I'm definitely happy with the work that we've uh, done in the last year and going forward, we're definitely looking to build upon that. But yeah, thank you so much for having us. Happy to have yeah, you. Right. You are in the right direction, that is for sure. So how did you know that your idea would work? How did you know that people are going to want this kind of product? Yeah, so I mean, for me, the idea sort of started in the summer of 2019. I spent um, five weeks in China, sort of, you know, living abroad um, in Beijing. And, you know, in China, one thing that maybe it was me as a Westerner noticed or just sort of is a part of life there is all the facial recognition cameras, you know, it felt like they were across every every single corner, at least for me, you know, that made me a bit uncomfortable. I don't know if you know, if you're a local Chinese person, that's the same thing. But you know, I ended up having a conversation with my host family. And, and it turns out, you know, I was not alone in this concern. So there definitely is a big demand out there. Um, you know, facial recognition is so new. And there, there is, I think, rightfully so maybe limited trust in it being used for the right reasons. So we wanted to take that choice from the big government into the hands of the people um, so they can make that choice for themselves, whether they want to opt in or opt out from facial recognition. That's amazing. It really is something that, especially in a place like China, where I'm not, I'm not going to say too much about China, but you know, that's just a place where they can pretty much see everything. So you, it's nice to have the option of um, not seeing everything. So who would you consider your first mentors, maybe two different people? And what did they help you go through? So our, one of our first uh, biggest mentors was um, Professor Aisawa Chesin from the Japanese National Institute of Informatics. He's one of the like leading facial recognition researchers in the world right now. And when this project began, we were kind of looking at his ideas and we thought uh, we could test some of them um try to make them cheaper and more effective um but then uh we we decided to reach out to him and we talked to him he explained to us like why he feels facial recognition is a big problem and he he kind of gave us those first steps um that pushed us on our way to to uh found our own company and have our own idea oh nice well he has quite the title how did you guys get to him Oh, just a cold email. And we were like super surprised when he emailed us back like the next day being like, yeah, I'm thrilled that you guys are interested. Would you guys like to Zoom meet? And we were absolutely over the moon. But, um, yeah, that's amazing. I actually, I find myself, you know, working in the startup that I'm working now that you can really, you can connect with anyone. It's not as hard as you think, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they actually answer, they're people just like we are. So it, but it's still, it's surprising each time. Um, so how much time did it take for you to build the product that you launched? Yeah, that's a good question. I think honestly, at the beginning, our sort of like our sort of mindset was let's just get something as quick as possible and sort of refine it as we go on and get, you know, customer and feedback. So, I mean, literally, I don't know, day one, it was sort of over at my house and we're like doing cardboard and everything. And then, you know, as time goes on, we're, we catted it and maybe within a month we had our first um, 3D printed um, version, which is sort of maybe similar to what we have now. But I mean, as we've gone, it sort of is constantly being um, retuned, I guess. I think the version that we're using now maybe was like, I don't know, it was only a week or two old, um, but yeah. 
Well, yeah, always building and getting feedback and building again. I think it's a really important um, subject for people that haven't built anything yet to know that the first time you build something, it's probably not going to be the last time. So I'm happy that you um, brought that up. And how much funding was needed to build your first version? And what would you recommend to those who don't have any money or any funding? I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't have any funding. Um, initially, we thought we might get a little school funding, but we, we didn't end up having that. Um, we, we, we just bought some stuff on our own, maybe $100 worth of various materials, and we, we tested them. We tried different like reflective materials and absorbing materials. Um, and we, we kind of just went through those and tested them, tested putting them on different parts of our faces. Um, and for those who don't have the money, I think you can start small, start with, uh, like in our case, we could have just used like a piece of tape to cover our nose and see what that did. Um, and I, I would recommend trying to be as simple as possible, test something with something with materials that you have around your house. And then once you think you have an idea that works, then you can, um, go forward and buy something that might be a little more expensive to uh, test something that like actually would be your, uh, a more final uh, version. Mm -hmm. Just trying it out in the simplest way possible and then kind of using your imagination until the real thing comes to life. So how did you get those first users and you know customers? What was that like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our background is both in sort of like tech and science, you know what I mean? We're not really at least we're maybe a little bit less experienced on the whole business end. And so when we wanted to get it out as quick as possible, we said, let's partner with a group that already has these ties and these connections sort of in this circle. So we partnered with a group called Fight for the Future. They're one of the leading um, groups in this, you know, personal liberties, responsible use of technology field. And, you know, they were equally as excited as we are. And, you know, this was an approach maybe using science to fight back versus activism that they hadn't really either seen before or taken. And they've been super eager to, you know, put our two approaches together because at the end of the day, we have the uh, same goals. So they've been using a lot of their existing ties and their existing customers and their existing um, media sources to help get us out there. Yeah, it's really taking a, a smart approach to something that they also feel is very important to talk about. And they probably, you know, didn't have the mindset that you guys have. So I'm sure that these kind of go hand in hand. Do you guys have yeah. like the product to show me? Yeah. So here is, here are two, They're one in white, one in black. Uh -huh. um, here's like the clip that clips on to a pair of sunglasses. Okay, so like um, I need a pair I don't have glasses, glasses on me, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gla glasses or sunglasses, yeah. And then and then it just and then on. it like yeah. covers your nose. And you can even if like uh you have a facial recognition on your phone to like unlock, you can flip it up while it's still attached to glasses and your phone will recognize you and then you can flip it back down. Okay. Very original. So what is um, one mistake that you guys have learned throughout this journey that you would avoid? For us, I think one mistake we had initially was like not thinking that this was uh, a big enough idea. Not we, we didn't shoot high enough. I think at first we we were kind of we were like, oh, let's just do let's just do this for fun. We had some time over the summer because uh, a lot of other things were canceled and we, we didn't really, um, we didn't think that it could become such a big, uh, such a big thing. And so I think aiming high and you, you can be realistic. Like we didn't expect to be, to be billionaires in two weeks, but like, um, I think shooting, shooting high is, is important, especially at a young age when you don't have as much to lose. Yeah. I mean, especially with all the free time and you turn this hobby into a super business. So, I mean, I think we could all say thank you to all the free time that you had because it is a huge advantage. Um, it's actually something that I'm hearing with a lot of young entrepreneurs that started what they're doing during the pandemic just because they had so much time. So why don't I just do something with it? 
which is great because a lot of people didn't really do anything the last year. Um, so since you guys work together, you're each other's co-founders, what are three traits that you would look for in a business partner or co-founder type? This, this sort of connects to my last answer. So two, two um, different things. So one is first uh, short-term uh, realism. So be, be realistic. You don't want someone who's shooting way too high. But then also having long-term ambition because those two things are very important. It's important to have both. Um, and it's important to have multiple people who have both. And then uh, the third thing would be having someone with a, a different perspective than you, a different mindset. Because um, if you're fo founding a business, alone, I mean, I don't know from experience, but I feel like if I was alone, there'd be things I wouldn't think of. There'd be things I wouldn't do that having a, a partner who has a slightly different mindset um, is very helpful to, to balance our ideas and um, figure out what would be best overall uh, that one of us alone might not have seen. So would you say that you two are kind of opposites in some areas? I don't know about that. I think we, we share like sort of the right stuff, which is, you know, maybe the creative thinking, but also like the wanting to go, go, go and get it done. But um, I think especially maybe in the early days when we were trying like to, to design it and like imagine where it would be useful, I think sort of bringing our maybe our own personal experiences and background with that, that was super helpful. Yeah, I mean, you guys seem like a great team. You really complete each other. And since you know, founders and co-founders, they need to really, they need to get along. And, you know, in simpler words, they need to talk all day, every day and not get tired of one another. And it seems like you guys have um, a great chemistry. Um, so what would you say is an advantage or a disadvantage, you know, both advantage and a disadvantage of being a young entrepreneur? Yeah. So I think definitely the advantage, and we've kind of touched on this already is that, you know, we have very little to lose, you know, at such a young age, we have a lot of free time and, um, you know, we're young, we can go out and get this done. And, you know, we don't have any other jobs besides being a student. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to lose. Um, and I think that makes it, you know, all the more reason to, you know, you want to start young. Maybe one disadvantage though, is that, I mean, we, thankfully with the people that we've partnered with, we haven't faced this, but, you know, this may be something that a lot of young entrepreneurs face is that there's always going to be that person that is going to be like, are you guys a little bit too young to be doing this? Or, um, you know, so, I mean, I think, I think for the most part, we've been taken seriously, but I think that's just always something that you have on your mind as a young entrepreneur is that um, there will be those people that, you know, think you're a little bit too young. Yeah, you guys have the the people to back you up that are probably, you know, older than you are. It's not that hard to be older. And what you do have going on, if it was just you on your own, it would have it would have been a bit more of a maze than it is when you have these people working alongside you. So I'm happy that you didn't have to go through that disadvantage. But I do think that even going through with it, at the end, those people that ask, like, aren't you a bit young to be here in the end are going to be like, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said anything. So yeah, we'll, we'll let our product speak for itself on that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, so going throughout this process and building what you've built, what is a tech tool that you can't go without? Maybe like a website or an app, anything of that? I mean for in terms of producing it, like we need a, a 3D printer. And I think for a lot, so this part is 3D printed. Um, for a lot, I think it's a great tool for a lot of people. You don't have to own one, neither of us own one. Um, they are very expensive. But um, if, if there's one at like your local library or your high school, if you know someone who has one, then um, you can use a 3D printer to do so many things and they're free places to CAD online. So you don't, you don't need um, to spend a ton of money to use one if there's some in your community. And that's something that we, we've taken advantage of. And we think it's something that um, is, is very useful for anyone who's uh, trying to start a business at such a young age. Yeah, this is for sure the first time that I've heard of a 3D printer being something that's like super important, but you have a physical product that, you know, it's, it's something, it's not like online, it's something that you actually use and you can touch it. So um, I totally feel that. And it's super cool that, you know, um, which entrepreneurs inspire you the most these days? Who do you guys have your eye on? 
Oh, geez. I can maybe take this. One guy that I like, he's a little bit less well-known, but he's in the U.S. His name is George Hotz. He's the founder of a um, like AI car company called Kama AI. And one of his big things is that he makes the code for his product all open source and publicly available. And the reason is, you know, he doesn't care how much of the pie is his. He just wants it to be a really good pie. And I think sort of that um, that sort of mindset of just really wanting, you know, putting the social impact first is what we're all about. Um, I just, yeah, I think that's a mindset that not a lot of entrepreneurs are taking. And I think his bold thinking is sort of maybe paving the way for his company um, and allowing them to be successful because of that mindset. Yeah, that's great. I actually love the fact that you give someone that's maybe not as known to the public, you know, I've already heard of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos a few times over. So I think it's great. And also, you know, what he's doing, ha like totally look at my idea and see how great it is and use it and learn from it and not having anything to hide. I think that's really important. Um, so which trait of yours, yours or Evans, do you feel is your weakest and you need to outsource it? Maybe Evan uses Will, Will uses Evan, or maybe like a technical platform that helps you? Well, something that both of us were not good at per se was like reaching out to the press and knowing how to navigate that whole world. Because like we could tell, we could tell our grandparents, we could tell our friends, about uh, what we did, except those people like maybe a couple of them will buy it, except that's not how you really get uh, publicity. And so we outsourced that with Fight for the Future, who we um, connected with, and they had that experience. They have the experience of reaching out to the press and knowing how to how to navigate that whole world, which we weren't even involved in. Like we're, we're scientists, we're not um, businessmen yet at heart. So like we, we didn't really know um, how to do that and it was something very helpful that they they had the experience that we were able to to learn from well yeah you guys took quite a an amazing platform and used it to your advantage and i'm pretty sure that they did the same once they had you they used it to their advantage so everyone wins here and you may not be businessmen but you are on your way there so don't don't talk so quickly. So you guys mentioned social change a few times throughout our conversation, which is really inspiring and really great to hear that without me asking or without me mentioning that that is your direction. That's why this, this has come to life. So how important do you guys think it is for young entrepreneurs to think about social change when creating a business? Yeah, I mean, for us, social change is everything. You know, we are a we are a company founded on you know social change, and that's what we wanted to do. But I think, yeah, I think all all young entrepreneurs um, have have definitely responsibility, especially you know as as you gain a platform with your company, you want to make sure that you're on the right end of that social change, and you're the, sort of the ones creating social change for the better. But I think, yeah, I mean, for us at least for us, that's what is sort of driving our company at the end of the day. And I think that just makes it all the more rewarding experience for us to just sort of build our company around um, solving this issue that we saw um, two years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think, it's, sorry, Evan, go for it. I was gonna say, I think, especially as young, as, as young entrepreneurs, it's like, this is the world we're going to be coming into. And so if we can have an impact on that, and if we can do something to to help create the world that we want to live in in the future we want our kids to grow up in then that's kind of our our, our goal and our purpose is to is to make a better world for everyone it really is and i mean it's it's only like in its first few years and i think it's going to be something revolutionary something that people will really see as only like doing good and helping others and I think that you're going to use this platform for good, you know, in the long term. Also, just having that that power, that place where you, people, you know, want to hear what you have to say. They want to hear your opinions, just like I want to hear what you guys have to say now. Um, so last question, and I would like both of you to answer. If you could have any superpower in the world, what would you pick? So for me, this for for the longest time, this has been my uh, the, the superpower. This has been my answer to that question, and it fits in well with our company. And that's the power to be invisible. 
<laughs> I think it's like obviously it fits in with avoiding facial recognition. But I, I don't know. I've I've always thought it was so cool to be able to invisible to to be able to be invisible. Me, it, I don't know where it started, but I might have read a book where there's an invisible. I'm gonna say it started something. with Harry Potter and his invisibility cloak. It it, it very much might have. I, mean, <laughs> I, I yeah, <laughs> yep. I maybe will also give a Harry Potter answer and say a. <laughs> Um, a time turner from Hermione Granger, you know, oh. as young entrepreneurs balancing school, social life, and then this, sometimes you do wish there were 25 hours in a day. And I think having that would be, would definitely go a long way. I've actually had a few entrepreneurs say that they would want the ability to not need to sleep so they could use the entire day for, you know, whatever they wanted. But I, I personally would never give up on sleeping. It's the best. <laughs> so Evan, Will, it was so nice getting to know you and what you guys are doing. Um, we heard about what you guys are doing and we just, we, we jumped at the opportunity to personally hear from you and what you have to say about the entire industry and how things got started. Um, I really hope that we could have another talk soon and I can't wait to see how things go and what you do next.